Hi everyone! Welcome to this live stream today. Um, my name's Cara and I'm in Scotland, in Edinburgh, Scotland. And I'm doing this uh, live stream today as part of a World YWCA series um, on SRHR and mental health. And I'm really delighted to be meeting a young leader who works within the YWC movement, which is a movement that means the world to me and that I've been part of for a long time. Hi everyone, hi Gemma, hi Fairy. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is part of a World YWC series. Um, it's a two week uh, campaign that the World Y are running. And if you haven't met the World YWC before um, and the team in Geneva, they are a fabulous group of feminists running the biggest women's movement in the world. Um, the World Office, plays a key role in, in pulling everything together and um, yeah, securing funding for international projects for young women leaders um, and young women's rights. And it's, it's a fantastic organisation with a really rich 160 year old history. Um, so this series today, we're, I'm in Scotland and I'm going to be chatting to a young leader, Vera, who is in Moscow in Russia. Um, and it's part of a bigger project. So the World YWC and the government of Finland, along with young women around the world, um, they came together and they developed an online campaign. And it's around SRHR, which is Sexual and Reproductive Health and Rights, um, and Mental Health. And the, the project, the campaign is called My Body, My Mind. You might have heard a little bit about it online, but if you haven't, there's lots more on the hashtag MySRHR. And you can also check out the World YWCA on Instagram. Um, it's also on Facebook, on Twitter, and their website you'll find online as well. Um, and the aim of the campaign was to challenge dominant narratives that exist around SRHR issues. Um, and to ultimately improve gender equality. Um, so they've been doing some fantastic work and all of the resources as part of that campaign you can find on the World Y website. Um, all of the materials are based on real stories that young women um, have shared from their own experiences uh, and that's young leaders in Eastern Europe, Africa, Asia and the Pacific. Um, and the World Y are inviting you to take part in it by telling your stories um, and advocating for your rights as a young person, if you're a young person watching, or the rights of others um, in solidarity and as an ally. Um, I am waiting for Vera to join. I'm not sure if she's here. Oh yeah, she is. Um, so before I introduce her, um, I just wanted to explain, <laughs> I know Nina's in the background, I have a cat who loves to feature in my live videos and interviews and conversations. She's called Nina and she might make an appearance, um, but yeah, she's, she likes to make a bit of noise when I get started and then she might go to sleep. <laughs> Um, so part of this campaign um, that Vera is part of, who I'm going to be chatting to, is um, panel discussions. There are some that you can find on Facebook, Instagram Q&A, um, there are Instagram and other social media takeovers happening this week and, and last week as well that you can catch up on. Um, check out the World YWC Instagram and their highlights. And um, There's also something that I can't get my head around, but it's called a video art meme contest for young women around the world. Um, you can check that out too. I'm sure that'll be on the worldwide social media. Um, so I don't know a huge amount about this project, but I'm really interested and fascinated in how um, interlinked and connected mental health and sexual and reproductive health and rights are. So I absolutely can't wait to hear from an expert herself. Um, Vera is based in Moscow. Um, she's got a track record in advocacy, policy making and campaigning around gender based violence and SRHR um, and at the moment one of the things that she's doing is she's a regional coordinator for a world YWC project um, and the project is all about young women changing narratives around SRHR and mental health. And Vera is the regional coordinator for Eastern Europe. So she's working with so many young women and has so much to share. And I absolutely can't wait to chat to her. So I'm gonna try and add her in. Uh, fingers crossed. Yay! 
It worked. And we are we are twinning with our glasses as well. I noticed. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Is the connection good? The connection is perfect. I think there might be a small delay, but I can hear you. I'll just listen. How are okay. you doing? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm fine. Um, I just recently graduated and received my diploma from my master's. Thank you for introducing me. It's my pleasure. <laughs> Oh, congrats. What was, what was it that you recently graduated from? Uh, I graduated from a higher school of economics, uh, Moscow. Um, I did um, a master's in population and development, um, and I'm majoring in gender and development. Oh, amazing. That sounds so interesting. And did you have to finish part of your studies um, during the pandemic? Yeah. Um, unfortunately, but, um, you know, I had my last exams in December, so it was all online. It's supposed to be online anyway, without pandemic, but, uh, I think uh, anyway, without, uh, going to classes or with, it's, uh, it's been a very tough time for everyone. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like I've, I've only read a little about what's happening in Russia, but I know just around the world um, and in Russia, as well as like the UK, you've been you've experienced so much um, of this virus. Um, yeah, I know it's Pauline who's helped us set this up. So she works for the World YWC office and is in the same, same team as Jaylen and they've been fantastic. Thank you so much at helping us prepare for this. <laughs> I know they do so much hard work. And yeah, she's saying I love that you have almost have the same glasses. <laughs> that wasn't planned. Yeah, that wasn't. Uh, so, yeah, I have been tracking situation in the UK as well, and uh, I've seen some same movements, and um, unfortunately in Russia and uh, also in other Eastern European countries, uh, the pandemic wasn't um, handled very well. Like in Belarus, it wasn't recognized at all. Okay. So uh, it uh, was all for people and for civil society to protect themselves. Um, yeah, in Russia, it's uh, may maybe a little bit big, um, better in Moscow, but still in uh, Russia is so big and so huge. And of course, so many regions suffered more. Uh, same goes for Ukraine, who was um, closed, but still the pandemic is going on there. Um, so yeah, there's been tough time. <laughs> And yeah, it has been a tough time. Yeah. And what, what's it been like for you? Are you, um, have you been at home? Like, have you had to stay inside or what have you been doing for the past few months? Uh, yeah, um, I decided to not go home um, because I live with my parents and they are um, like around their 60s. 60s. <laughs> uh, and I decided to, um, yeah, not to go and I stayed here in Moscow. So I'm, I'm still in my dorm. But it, um, I, I'm, I can't, um, you know, um, complain <laughs> uh, because, uh, yeah, I live with very understanding roommate and my friend. And um, so it's the, the lockdown wasn't that bad. But of course, we did all the restrictions. We weren't going out a lot. Uh, not a lot. We just went out like once a week for, to shop for like three months. So we've been trying to, to do wherever we can. <laughs> Okay, and we can chat a little bit more maybe about about mental health um, because we both have our own personal experiences as everybody does. Um, but I guess I also wanted to learn a little bit more off, off the pandemic topic. It'd be really good to have a conversation about the project that you've been involved in and this campaign that the World YWC and the government of Finland and all of these young women leaders like you have, have organised. Um, I think it'd be really nice to, to hear more about something else because there's so much conversation about the pandemic it would be lovely yeah let's have a conversation about but all the brilliant work that you do um that sounds good we've had a couple of comments some love thank you for the love and um, there's Danny who also works in the World YWC office and is an absolute star um and then someone has said oh Pauline it's so important to have good people around you whenever that's possible I totally right. agree yeah <laughs> yeah that's so true um, so I guess like first of all it would be really interesting to hear a little bit more about the project that you're the regional coordinator for Eastern Europe of. Um, can you tell me about the project and what is 
what is a safe space in what in YWCA terms? Yeah, so I've been involved in this project uh, uh, project uh, a year now, um, and yes, I've been I've been invited uh, to be a regional coordinator for Eastern Europe, a very special region for me because I'm from here, from from Belarus, and I know the region very well and the developments in gender inequality and other other things in sexual and productive health and rights and mental health. So I've been very, very excited to start my work. And uh, what I did first is I tried to, con to contact uh, YWCA's around the region and um, YWCA's from the region. They um, invited young women leaders from their countries, from their movements to be a part of this project. Um, and my, my goal and my main aim was to support them and um, in them changing narratives around uh, sexual reproductive health and rights and mental health. So the aim was not to impose uh, my own view or the view of um, like other people of, of what, what they want to do, which activities when, when they create, but rather to listen to them, to hear them and to to try to create the environment uh, they will be comfortable. So we did a regional training in Geneva and we've been so lucky that at the same time we visited um, Beijing 25 plus um, in, in uh, UN. So uh, everyone was very happy and was um, big news and uh, a lot of excitement to see, you know, this um how those politics and politics in gender are uh, working and yes and we did a regional training uh when young women leaders were able to to learn more about uh, reproductive health and rights and interlinkage with mental health and then uh, there was a part when they were uh, trying to gather their resources and to start their own projects um not like a project in a rigid form, but just uh, wherever they feel like to do uh, in this topic. Yeah. Great. Uh, so I I, think... I, and a lot of things been done. <laughs> and coming yeah. back today, I just wanted to, to say about the, again, about the COVID and still that we, we've been active online, but World YWCA did uh, two um, safe, uh, virtual safe spaces. Uh, where, where young women leaders from all around the movement being able to talk about, uh, you know, about how they're feeling, about the lockdown and other things they, mm, they wanted to, 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 to chat with each other in a safe space. <laughs> oh, wow. And I've, I have so many questions to ask you. Um, so about the virtual safe space, um, was that, how did that work? Was it, was it a password or like was it a private space that young women could could talk to each other in? Yeah, there was a moderated uh, online space on um, on a platform. Uh, I suppose that was Zoom. Maybe I, I don't remember. And it was yeah. moderated by other um, coordinators uh, like me, Jill, and actually she she just she's been in comments recently and Nirmala. So we. Uh, and, and, and other young women leaders from the movement. So we've been moderating, um, listening to these stories and, you know, keeping the conversation going. <laughs> I think it's pretty incredible what you're doing. I think sometimes when you, when you work in an international space, like we forget um, how special it is to bring all of these different people together from different places so you have Eastern Europe that you're representing and then you mentioned Jill who is representing Africa and coordinating that um, and then Nirmala who's in Nepal in Asia and I think you've been working with Naomi as well in Papua New Guinea and mm -hmm. um, so the Pacific I mean that is it yeah it's it's easy to underestimate like how how special it is to bring all of those women together from different parts of the world. Um, have you have you formed like a, a friendship with those people through this project? Uh, yeah, uh, of course we, we've been we've been establishing our friendship since uh, since we've been introduced to each other online. And I remember that once we met, uh, we went to the. Um, um, World YWCA Council in South South Africa, uh, and we met each other for the first time. 
uh, it was very, very exciting, you know, to when you work with some people only online and then you see them and you work with them like um, face to face. It's, um, I know, it's a pure happiness. <laughs> so I'm, I'm totally for, um, you know, phys physical and face to face interactions if there is a choice, of course. Mm. Yeah. And do you find like some of the topics that you're you're dealing with? So within SRHR and mental health, like there's a lot of stigma and a lot of um, like challenges, I guess, with talking about some of these things, even just sharing personal stories as young women can, can you know, be difficult. Um, does it does it make a difference? Like if it's if it's young women talking to each other, do you find that that um, it's easier to to challenge the narrative and to have that solidarity and and share things if it's if it's other young women. Yeah, uh, I think what I noticed through the project and what's really really important when we talk about uh, reproductive rights and reproductive health and mental health is that uh, those are very very universal topics. First of all, because it's health and because it's gender, it's uh, it's about everyone. Mm. And uh, I think. Um, the problems to young women face in, in each region, whether it's Africa or Eastern Europe or Asia, they are all the same. Uh, I mean, in different, um, you know, contexts, of course, in different um, developments, but still that's, uh, that's a sense of uh, universal, universal, um, I don't know, values and, um, you know, a sense of injustice sometimes when, uh, uh, I remember when we when we did a um, regional training in South Africa and we, we had a room full of uh, like uh, young women like in intergenerational in, in intergenerational perspective uh, of all over the world and um, they we've been working in the groups in mini groups and they've been saying uh, um, they were sh sharing the same thoughts and uh, the same the same ideas the same ways they see they can tackle these some problems so I think it's it's very universal and we should talk more in um, in spaces like this in mixed yeah. spaces. <laughs> yeah, that's I love that. I think these um, these issues and particularly from what I know, like I, I work in the field of mental health and, and I have worked internationally on women's rights. And I, it's interesting, like, well, the context can be different, um, how universal and, and how, yeah, we, we often experience very similar things. And knowing that other people, um, whether it's in your city or in another part of the world, um, experience that can help with our mental health because it helps us not feel alone. It means that we know, yeah, other people experience the same things as us that that can help in itself i think yeah, yeah. That, that's the feeling of commonality and uh, those things are just uh, you know when i noticed also when i was working in the groups it's just driving people to speak up more and mm. to share more because sometimes you think oh you know it's just about me or this just uh, about i don't know my personal experience but when you just share it and uh, you can realize that um, you know many young women and girls around, uh, you know, had the same experience, and that's um, that's important to to share. And that's the importance of the safe space approach, which yeah. you will see is um, thriving and trying to incorporate in different projects. Yeah. So there's lots of aspects to the safe space, right? So, I mean, I guess like you've talked about, um, we talked a little bit about the virtual safe space. Um, but what are the other things that you think are important to make a safe, to make a space safe? <laughs> yeah, uh, you know, I've been doing a Twitter uh, makeover on uh, for World YWCA and yeah. World YWCA have a, a lot of, uh, have a model. Uh, of um, of the principles that can be incorporated in any uh, um, conversation with the, with the young women and how to establish safe space. So it's it's different aspects. So what I what I think it's uh, the most important and what uh, other young women been sharing with me online is the building the feeling of trust. It's very important. Um, um, also, you know, to, to promote the dignity, to promote inter, intergenerational cooperation, uh, to establish um, 
you know, to, to have a safe space, like a safe area when young women can go, uh, they can easily reach uh, some, some, some area because, you know, <laughs> it's also, it's also it's, things like this are also important. Um, yeah, what I think this, the challenge for me uh, when we talk about safe space is uh, um, usually like I do not hold a, a degree of psycho psychologist. So, and it's, uh, I think it's um, very tricky and can be hard not to go too much, you know, when you moderate in the safe space and you, um, because you're not a therapist, but also to, to keep this therapeutic effect. Uh, so I think it's a, it's a big challenge and uh, mm, yeah, we should be warned by this. What yeah. do you think? Yeah, I that as you were saying that I was smiling because um so I, I've been part of the YWC movement for a number of years now and I've I've helped to facilitate safe spaces and I've been in them and one of the things is so interesting because it is a powerful space to be in and it also I think as soon as somebody in the space um, gets emotional or shares something very personal, which often happens when when women are together, um I think then it's yeah it's very interesting like where the line is between it becoming a therapeutic space and then it, and also being a safe space facilitated by by somebody who who knows how to do that so that I'm smiling because I've been in situations uh, where there's been a circle of chairs or people sitting on the floor and then it has become emotional and and you really do need somebody or at least one person to be holding that space and that is similar to the job of a therapist and um, but it is very different set of skills and yeah I'm, I'm not a therapist <laughs> I go to therapy which I love um but yeah I've, I'm smiling because I can remember those those times where yeah I feel um the the coordination and the job that you're doing as a regional coordinator in holding those spaces is actually so important and um, because you set the tone and you provide the reliable information to everybody and you make sure everybody has a chance to speak it doesn't just you don't just open a door and put people in a room and it happens um yeah it's a very it's a very special thing and it's something that so many years of hard work and thought have gone into making it making it work um yeah so what what else do you do in your role as as regional coordinator so I imagine some of it will be coordinate coordinating these spaces um what other jobs like what what things do you do in your day um what I also try to ensure in my work is that uh, that young women leaders who are involved in, in the project are receiving information about uh, things that happen in, in the region, uh, globally, in their countries. So I, I try to link them as much as possible with um, with other organizations, people, uh, or um, I don't know, other resource parts, um, uh, that uh, that deal with with the SRHI and mental health, uh, for them to expand their um, expand their um, knowledge and at the same time the connections because I think it's it's very it's very important. Yeah, so and how part yes? <laughs> how do you know do you know how many different um, areas you're working with? Do you have an idea of how many different women, young women, that you're talking to? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have five countries in my region that I'm working with. It's uh, Albania, uh, Ukraine, Belarus, um, Armenia, and Poland. So, and we have two young women leaders from each country. And okay. Usually, usually I approach to both of them. And uh, of course they, um, they transmit the information uh, to other other young women from the Y movement and to their, um, I, I want to say M M A. It's a, not not a mother agency, but <laughs> member association. Member association, yeah. So, and yeah. You, mm -hmm. I was just going to say, how do you speak to them all? Do you meet in person sometimes, or are you phoning them, or using the internet? Yeah, it it really depends. I really like uh, doing newsletters, monthly newsletters for them, <laughs> uh, because uh, sometimes I have so many so many things in my head and so many resources. But if I will just you know knock, knock uh, I don't know every day, it's a bit 
maybe not annoying, but it's, I, I think it's, it's better to the person to have it, you know, written and when she can click <laughs> and go to some link. So I do newsletters and uh, I use the chat on WhatsApp and sometimes I do require to speak personally um, because I think some situations they need personal <laughs> approach and uh, uh, even con conversation. And I always should, always uh, try to 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 promote them to speak to each other. Not not to speak to each other. Sorry, it's uh, just to to cooperate with each other. I mean, in the group. Yeah. And have you found um, have you found that the same themes are coming from all of these different young women in different places within Eastern Europe? Yeah. Um, it's uh, it became like this that uh, in every country um, those young leaders they deal with um, different um, different they tackle different problems like um, in um, Belarus young women leaders they are focusing on uh, sexuality education because uh, we do not have any any um, sexuality education incorporated and they really think that it's important to spread um, like even uh, unofficial information <laughs> and they did so many things they did uh, postcards they did telegram stickers um, they did many conversations uh, storytelling online so more about um, Cassie, Cassie's uh, uh, sexuality education um, for for young women leaders from Poland for example they focus in more on um, redirecting resources uh, for young women migrants and of mm. course like uh, young women migrants as a vulnerable group uh, they need some special approach when it comes to reproductive health and reproductive rights of so in this uh, they are this um, point where, where they can redistribute them to other organizations um, yeah so like in, in Ar Armenian uh, Armenian young women leaders they also are uh, do sexual education, but in different approach. For example, they they doing it uh, in person. So they they hold the mini groups. Um, they do like a, you know these classic trainings, <laughs> informal trainings. Uh, so um, yeah, it's uh, different tools, uh, different different methods, different different topics, uh, but still the problems are the same. So <laughs> that's yeah. that's the common point. Yeah, and of course. Um... I guess that the connection between mental health and particularly young women's mental health um, and SRHR is, is so important and it's important that we acknowledge it. Um, I think it's a key part of, of all health work. Um, like we, and we all have physical health and we all have mental health. Um, and often when we talk about mental health issues or mental illness, we just use the phrase mental health, which can be quite confusing. I think often people say, um, yeah, my mental health, and they mean something negative rather than something positive, even though it can be both. Um, so it sounds like this project is, is changing some of that because you're having those conversations and changing the way that people think about, um, yeah, their health. Um, why do you think um, and I um, need to think about this myself, but why do you think it's important that we talk about young women's mental health when we talk about sex and reproduction and mm -hmm. health and rights? Um, so to my mind, um, in the region of Eastern Europe, um, you know, this topic been neglected for a long time. And um, it's not only for young women, young women or young girls. Um, it's for everyone. So there is a big stigma around mental health and uh, asking for help and, you know, vulnerability and all those kind of things. And of course, I think for, for young women with intersection, in, intersection to reproductive health, it's, uh, it's even more important because it's just, you know, um, most of the countries, they've been just um, very young, like Belarus is just 20 years, Belarus. Uh, and uh, it's, it's growing a bit, but uh, uh, recently there was much worse. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think it's, it's really important to, to, to hold these spaces to, for, um, for NGOs and with the help of uh, um, UN agencies that work in, in the region, for them to promote those spaces and try to connect 
uh, you know, our governmental approach with what social, uh, civil society need, with what young women need, because sometimes it's just disconnected. And uh, that's why I think this community work by YWC is very, very crucially important. Yeah, and it, it's interesting because I was talking to a friend of mine in, in India the other day and she was talking about, she feels that the, the pandemic and that this year in particular, people have come back to communities more and they're thinking more about the importance of community and coming together and listening to people in communities. Um, I, think, I think that's true. I feel like yeah. um, there's definitely been a sense of that in Scotland of people maybe talking to their neighbours and people around them more and actually talking about mental health more than I've seen before. Yeah. I think it became it became acceptable or less stigmatized. It's not, not completely gone. There's still a lot of stigma, but it's become more um, okay to sort of talk about how we're feeling and, and some of the difficult things like anxiety or, or all, all parts of that. Yeah. Um, one of the other things I've noticed, not just the focus on communities, and I wonder if it's the same in Eastern Europe, is there's been a lot of conversations that I've heard people who menstruate have about um, hormones and their cycle and then, then it being different during the pandemic and, and maybe being connected to stress. Um, so that's really interesting because there is a connection that I've noticed personally um, between my anxiety or feeling low or other things that people experience. Uh, for me, it's those two. Um, I've noticed that it changes within the month of, of my menstrual cycle. Um, and I've never really thought about that before in very much detail. Um, but during the pandemic, when it's been quieter and I've been at home and I've had more time to think, um, I've noticed like... Uh, things that I hadn't noticed before, <laughs> like headaches and, and my moods and, yeah, those that being connected. Um, ha has there been those conversations in Eastern Europe um, about that? Yeah, definitely. Um, I, would, I would say also about the civil society being uh, raising uh, all over, like I know in Belarus, people are just, um, you know, help each other more mm. and... Um, it's been it's been very different. So there was this, this uh, uh, catal catalyzator. Catal uh, yes, it's catalyzed. Catalyst. <laughs> yeah. Yes. 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 Sorry. Uh, those uh, changes. Uh, it's definitely. Um, and I think also the same goes for same goes for mental health and young women speaking up about um, how you know or which which changes they're facing. And I think this thing you mentioned about cycle, it's like a lot of my friends said, and I've been also sharing this uh, on Twitter as one of the one of the struggles so many so many young young women and like women faced people who menstruate uh, faced. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it's uh, maybe the time that we can, you know, finally uh, take care of ourselves more and to, to, to notice more, more changes uh, in our bodies and uh, in the way we think. Um, and yeah. Yeah, it feels like there's been, we've had some space and some time to think about a lot of things. Um, and I know not everybody has. I realize like around the world it's different. And for some people it's been a very busy time or a very stressful time. Um, but I think for, yeah, for a lot of people they've, and maybe notice things that they hadn't before <laughs> um, or just, yeah, being be more aware particularly of, of the connection between mental and physical health. And at the beginning of the pandemic, one of the things that I was worried about was that the focus, of course, of coronavirus was on the physical symptoms and the fact that it was it tended to be affecting elderly people um, and it, it tended not to be affecting white people in the same way as it did other ethnicities and races of people um, and there was a focus on the elderly particularly at the beginning and not on young people <laughs> um, because that's the physical side of that that virus which is what it is and um, was affecting those people and that was the priority at first and I worried that young people and children would get uh, like missed or forgotten but it sounds like the United Nations the World Health Organization have been 
listening to young people as much as they can maybe um, and in Scotland anyway I've been really pleased to see research with younger people asking them uh, what they think um, and how they're feeling that was the key thing about their mental health and um, so not just the physical um, side of things but there will be a huge impact as a result of what's been going on in the world on people's mental health um, do you, in the project itself have you yeah have you been helping young people oh, I think I've lost you for a second but I'll wait till she comes back I'm sure she will just while I'm here remember to follow at Worldwide WSA on Instagram um, and Twitter if you've got Twitter they're also on Facebook um, and all of the materials in the project that Vera is talking about are available on the Worldwide WSA website and they these different parts of the world um, oh I think I might have lost her so I might try and add her back in I'll wait and see if Vera comes back um, but yeah you can find all of the materials from this campaign and project um, on their website and there's loads of other stuff there too so there was a panel conversation that happened that I really recommend checking out there have been discussions on Twitter and Instagram there have been takeovers by young women um, what else oh yeah there's a there's a thing you can get involved in that's a video art meme I think it is a contest and um, that's for young women if you are one or you know one and um, so yeah check out those things I think there's a QA and a as well um, and that some of that happened last week and some of it is happening this week um, and that's uh, partly what I'm doing today is part of that oh a few people have joined that I know hi Kelly hi Sumi in Japan it's so nice to see everybody and just join I'm sorry I should have explained what I'm doing hello <laughs> you disappeared but don't worry <laughs> you're back <laughs> I'm just checking that I can hear you can you I don't know if the sound is working I can now yes oh good um I was just plugging the materials from the project um it while well, you disappeared I was saying that people can go and have a look on the website and the social media <laughs> to see all of the materials um, so yeah, we were talking, we talked a little bit there about, um, yeah, yeah, I can't even remember what we were talking about when you disappeared. <laughs> um, about young people and, uh, uh, you know, how, oh, yes. how they begin in the yeah. there was not a lot of focus on young people and then suddenly <laughs> there was much more. Yeah, I was thinking that, yeah, and at the beginning I worried, now I'm not so worried, but I know that that's not the same in every country. And I was wondering, as part of the advocacy in this project that you're working on, um, what's, what are you trying to do or what would you like to see happen so that young people and, and young women um, have their voices heard by decision makers? Is, there, is part of the project about, about that? Um. You know, I think the most most activities we did were more about the, um, self, not the self-help, but just, you know, the inner circle. And there have been not a lot of advocacy, uh, as I know, um, due to uh, like for COVID and with the, uh, dealing with authorities. But of course, there have been some um, activists and like single activists and uh, other, uh, other uh, young women I know a lot that that some governments were tried to to do some laws like in Poland they've been tried to put the abortion ban again and uh, I think oh. it's also connected with pandemic because uh, people are not able to protest and uh, not that they are but they won't go to the streets but <laughs> you see things things changing <laughs> all over the world and um, yeah. Yeah, so it's like a tricky balance between responsibilities, intergenerational responsibilities, um, trust in government and institutions, so many things involved. Yeah, that's so interesting about, um, yeah, governments maybe trying to pass legislation or change policy. Um, it's quite quite sneaky. <laughs> um, but I know that it, it can happen everywhere. Um, and it has, yeah, it's been a bit of a scary time, I think, um, to be a young woman activist. I mean, I'm, I'm no longer a young woman <laughs> in the world wide of UCA. It goes up to age 30 and I'm 31. But over the past few years, like it, it has become a more 
stressful or, or sometimes scary place to do this work. Um, and I think that these two issues, like the, the well, there's not just two issues, there's lots, but these two broad themes um, of sexual and reproductive health and rights and then mental health, like, can be very challenging to, to talk about. Um, and, and we have differing views ac across a big women's movement as well, um, which, is, which can be challenging to, to navigate and to, yeah, and to work on together. Um, but I guess one of the things that I'm really interested in is how other people, so maybe you have your own personal experience of this and maybe some of the young women you've worked with, what do you do when, when you're feeling like you need, you need a break or your, your mental health maybe is, is suffering or is challenged by, by difficult activist work? Mm -hmm. Um, I would share that um, that this uh, topic uh, about um, you know activist burnout and uh, finding this balance in your personal life and um, activism and uh, you know how to not feel guilty that you are not too much or not too uh, you're not setting the standard or it's it's a, it's been a very big topic in uh, Russia. I would say Russian speaking countries like Ukraine, Belarus, and Russia, as I know. Uh, of course, yeah, probably it's same for like um, Poland and uh, Albania. But uh, this conversations I've been involved is definitely um, a huge topic for discussion about how we should be kind and. Um, and good and uh, how we should treat ourselves good first and if we're not treating ourselves good and we not feel good we cannot help other people and oh and of course the this thing you mentioned about um you know young uh, like feminist movement like roles and being united um, even though some have different interests, different focuses. It's also very important in times like this. Yeah, so, yeah that's, a, that's a huge, that's a huge topic. That's a huge discussion. It and is. I, yeah. You were going to say something else. Yeah, and I, I like that that it started. Uh, that that you know that uh, activists and young women leaders it, they start talking about this. Um, yeah. I've noticed one of the organisations that I know is a friend of the World Wide WC and inspires me is the Frida Fund, uh, which is a feminist fund for, for young women in different countries. Um, and I, they do some brilliant, um, they have some brilliant materials and I've been really inspired by some of the things that they have. Like they have a happiness manifesto and it's great. It's about like turning off your phone and like having breaks and some of that stuff um, is possible. Um, but I also imagine, and I know actually for a lot of young women that, um, that that's almost like a privilege to be able to, to switch off from some of it and so for a lot of young women around the world there are there are barriers to getting support for for mental health um and it's not as simple as taking some time off and <laughs> um, it might be that they're an activist and um, it might be that they are going about their day-to-day -day lives um, and yeah that they that they need support or they would like support but they don't know how to ask or where to go um what what are some of the barriers that that young people that young women in in this project have have spoken about for getting support for mental health um so i think that uh, in most countries involved in in the project it's as i said it's the stigma around mental health in general and due to this there are a lot of barriers like um a lot of young people and young women facing barriers in uh, being afraid to to um, ask for help um, for example, in state institutions, because usually like young women, they do not uh, have a lot of money and they cannot uh, do and they cannot request a therapy uh, like mm. a professional therapist, but they can they can go to, to some uh, public resources. But uh, there they, 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 uh, they're scared and uh, they think that, you know, they will expose them that, uh, you know, they've been they will be treated. Uh, um, you know, in a harmful way, not like, you know, they, they, they will be treated even worse than, and the situation will go even worse. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a, it's a, it's a huge, uh, it's a huge problem. And as I said, the lack of, lack of resources for, um, for help. And I think 
also one of the challenges is that um, there are not a lot of um, materials about self-support and self-help of how we can rely on ourselves, how we can, you know, um, grow this inside of us and how we can use it in difficult situations. And yeah. even, even, you know, in these situations when we don't have money or we don't have professional therapists or like we don't have uh, people around, we still can do something. And we can help. And I think to spread these resources is really, it's really important. Yeah, and I, it sounds like, I mean, from the way, way you've talked about the project that you're working on and the safe space model, um, this a safe space is a place that those resources can be shared and that training can happen and you can understand yourself a bit better and understand your rights and learn more about what, what you can do, even if you can't get extra help at the time. Um, do you think also a safe space is... Um, is it helping with uh, the digital divide? Because there's obviously lots of young women who don't have access to technology or the internet. Um, why is a safe space important um, in that context? Yeah, I would share like um, uh, an example that just popped out in my head about uh, also digital aspect and about safe spaces. And uh, uh, in Belarus, um, for example, YWCA Belarus run um, a big project with the UN Trust Fund aimed to to um, uh, to teach and to provide resources for specialists um, based on the y, YWCA um, safe space model for them to be more digi digitalized and you know for them to go online more uh, because um, um, there is like um, um, how to say a gap because most of the specialists are older and uh, and they don't go online and uh, as you yeah. said those young women and, uh, and those um, girls and young women who need help they're mostly online and they they would prefer to go to to approach online to write a message to some anonymous uh, i don't know anonymous group on uh, instagram rather than go to mm. Uh, a person who is older <laughs> so I think it's it's a it's a really really good um, good um, thing that that YWC of Belarus did uh, to you know to try to connect those state um, state workers and um, those providers of mental health with those young women that's just yeah. an idea <laughs> that's a great example I love that um, yeah, it sounds like it sounds like both are really important then. So the digital space where young people are already already are. I mean, one of the things that I I learned a few years ago um, <laughs> was that I was asking some young people like how to connect with them, like how can we grow um, the number of young women who engage in in the YWC movement here in the UK, or um, yeah, how can I how can I find more young people to to talk to about mental health, for example? Um, and the answer loud and clear was like, come to the places that we are. So don't try and bring us to your place. Like if we're on Instagram or we're on TikTok or whatever, um, yeah, make an effort to come to those spaces and, and engage with us where we are. And I think that digital element is so important and it sounds like the yeah, the offline is too, so that people who are not using the internet or have, there are barriers to accessing technology, um, those those physical spaces coming together in a room um, is also so important. Um, so it needs we need a combination of both, and I'm sure you'll agree. It just feels like uh, we we always need more more safe spaces will help break down barriers and stigma um, and yeah make us feel stronger <laughs> and more knowledgeable and and uh yeah help us as well i'm saying us but help young people young women <laughs> with their with their rights and their leadership too um i'm i'm interested i we i think we've only got like a little bit of time it's gone so fast um yeah, but i'm sure. i guess the the last thing i'd like to share and then i'd love to hear about your your version of this too is um like I think a lot of people who 
uh, watch the type of work that we do might be watching this they might be following it online we'd love to know how they can get involved um, or have the type of roles that you and I have had um, within the feminist movement and or maybe in mental health um, and I think there's a little bit of um, like I don't know it's like a bit of a mystery around what it's like to be a young leader or to become one um, and there are there are different ways to to get involved and one of the most powerful things for me that helped me as a young leader was being in a safe space um, and I I didn't grow up in the YWC movement but I came to it in my 20s and it it completely changed my life like being in those spaces and being you know being given the opportunity to talk even though sometimes it was a bit scary um, or a bit nerve-wracking like those moments and meeting those other women of all different ages and learning from each other and um, yeah that for me that transformed my career and what I did and I volunteered a lot like that's how people always ask me like how I got this job or whatever job I've done volunteering was key and also being in safe spaces um, so yeah, it's important to me and, I, and I'm sure it is for a lot of other leaders. And I guess I wanted to know what's, what's been important for you and um, how have you become a young leader in the worldwide movement? Um, so I also, I also agree with what you say. So it's also been same for me that the safe space, the volunteering are the key. And I think what also helped me a lot is the support I got from, uh, from other other young women involved who've been more uh, experienced at that time than me, uh, who see maybe some potential in me, who motivated me to be, to do something more. Because sometimes, yes, we do not trust them ourselves, so we don't we do not think that we can do something, and uh, maybe like deep inside we want we want something to do, but uh, we do not have um, that support around that. Yeah, you you know you can go for it. It's totally your thing. Um, it's not about uh, convincing differently, uh, like you should do this, but just about like be there. And I think it's the, the strength of YWC movement is this uh, this support that uh, I've been supported, and now I also been a uh, I am able to support other young uh, young leaders um, in everything they they you know um they want me to to support them and provide that um, that feeling that's uh, that once i received like um yeah. years <laughs> yeah. i love that because i think that i'm also very aware and um, like i'm a white um cisgender um middle class woman from scotland and i'm very aware that doors were open for me and people supported me um, and so it's so important that yeah I try my best to do the same for other um, young people um, and just yeah share those opportunities tell people you know and, and support where you can um, and yeah I think also like I'm just reflecting on something that I've been thinking about for the past few days which is I uh, feel like I'm often striving to be perfect and to feel better and feel happy and you know not not be struggling with my mental health which I do like I do just have really difficult times um, and I think yeah understanding my body more and um, my reproductive health my sexuality and um, understanding my mental health like I feel like the more we talk about those things and the more we understand ourselves then we can ask for help when we need it and also understand that it doesn't all need to be labeled and perfect and um yeah life is life can be a little bit messy and it's okay when it's not okay and um, but you can still become a leader and you can still do amazing things um yeah, yeah. do you agree yes completely completely <laughs> Uh, like not black and white but uh, yes just as it is and you would try to to deal with it <laughs> yeah I think so I, I hope that I, I love the work that you're doing I think it's amazing and um I'd love to read more about it and I'm sure people who are watching will how um I've suggested people go to the website and the social media um how else can we get the toolkit and the campaign materials where do we go yeah, so you can go in any uh, YWCA um, 
social media. So you can go on Facebook. It's all published uh, there. You can go on Twitter. And also there is a, a blog, she speaks uh, org, I think. Uh, yeah, where all the materials are published. And uh, there is a toolkit on this on this website, uh, which contains uh, all the case studies, comics, uh, videos, and uh, you can spread them using the hashtag of, um, my body, my mind. My body, my mind. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's good. I don't think I gave another hashtag earlier as well, which was no, no, my no. SRHR. But yeah, a bit of both. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Use them both. <laughs> yeah. I think um, it would be great to, yes, I'm going to go and check that out after this, and I hope other people can as well. Um, and there's also on the She Speaks blog, I know that there's a little bit about you, and there's also um, a profile on all of the young women who are the regional coordinators. Um, mm -hmm. So there's lots more stories there and information that people can find out. Um, and I really recommend it because this is key to, to gender equality. Like it absolutely is. We can't we can't separate these things really and we can't we need to um to talk about it more and understand it more and listen to young women um in order to make the world a more equal and just place i guess yeah yeah, yeah. i i i agree i agree so i i uh, i'm very happy to be involved in this campaign and in this work and to do to do what i can to engage more um young women um, you know, to, to share the resources with them and to, um, to help them to share also with their networks. Was there anything else that you wanted to, to talk about before we, before we wrap up? I just want to say thank you <laughs> for this nice conversation we had and for everyone who, who commented and shared, um, uh, shared their opinions. It's been my Yeah, thank you, everyone. <laughs> For me since it's like my first time talking like this so I've been a bit nervous but yeah uh, I'm very satisfied <laughs> you so, did fantastic <laughs> yeah it was so interesting to talk to you thank you so much and thank you to World YWCA and to the government of Finland who've supported this project and um, yeah it's been it's been lovely to be a little part of it and um, I feel, yeah, I feel very inspired and I'm going to go away and read things and have a think about my own work and the conversations I have with, with friends and other people. Um, so, yeah, thank you and, and take care. Yeah, you too, Cara. Thank you. Thank you. It was so nice to e meet you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, everybody, for joining in who's been watching us live. Bye. Um, bye. <laughs> bye. Oh.